Welcome. I'm Kevin Scott, one of the story architects of Star Wars The High Republic. This is Dominic Pace, who plays Gekko the Bounty Hunter from The Mandalorian. Hi, I'm Claudia Gray. I write Star Wars books. And you're listening. And you are listening to Star Wars Comics in Canon. The Force is strong with this one. Hello there and welcome to Star Wars Comics in Canon, your guide to the wider Star Wars canon through the comic book lens. And to take you on this journey, I'm your host, Mike Burton. And so brings episode 120. So my friends, this week I am tackling the one-shot comic written by Mark Guggenheim, which is called Star Wars Revelations 1. Now this is part of the Hidden Empire crossover event, but it's kind of set between Crimson Reign and Hidden Empire. If you want to check out my Crimson Reign episodes where I tackle all of the associated comics as well as the miniseries itself, go back and check out the fifth episode of Crimson Reign, which is episode 110, and the prior episodes are listed in that episode's description, so you can go back however far you need to through Crimson Reign or even in the crossover event before that, War of the Bounty Hunters. But we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about Revelations. And before I get into things, just a brief summary. I'm going to go through this comic, I'm going to go through it chronologically and give you the plot details as we go, and then along the way I'm going to link it to other information across the Star Wars canon, and a little bit of Legends, but primarily on canon, for certain things that pop up that we would recognise, or things I find interesting about certain elements, and there are quite a few connections in this comic, as it's quite a connective comic in what it's meant to be, so that's kind of an idea. So there will be spoilers, but I try and do it in a way that if you do pick up this comic yourself, you'll still get a lot out of reading it yourself, and I always recommend people do pick up the comic yourself digitally or physically support the creators regardless of this but with that all in mind let's delve into things so as i said it was written by mark guggenheim it was released november 23rd 2022 it's set just before hidden empire and after crimson reign so it's still in three to four years after the battle of yavin which is after empire strikes back but before return of the jedi there's quite a few artists that do different elements of this comic, but rather than stopping the comic part way and explaining who does what, I'm just going to list them all here and they will be listed in the description as well. So for colour artists, you've got Guru EFX, who did the artwork for pages 1 to 3 and then 36 to 40, and then you've got Dono Sanchez Almara, who did the remaining, which is pages 4 to 35. Then for just the artwork, so the pencillers and the inkers, you've got Salvador La Roca, Pierre Perez, Emma Kubert, Justin Mason, Paul Fry, and Wayne Foucher. If you want to find out explicitly which ones they did, then check out the photos I put on social media or pick up the comic yourself because they kind of do bits and pieces across the issue. And I will also note here that this story spreads across all of the ongoing comic series in Star Wars at the moment that aren't based in the High Republic. So that is Bounty Hunters and the 2020 runs of Star Wars, Doctor Aphra and Darth Vader. And there's also like a little bit about Han Solo and Chewbacca, which is the 10 issue series which is written by Mark Guggenheim. But I think that's more of a nod than anything. It doesn't seem to hugely impact the story, but we'll see because I have not yet finished the Han Solo and Chewbacca comics because they're not all out yet. So with that all in mind, here is The Crawl. It is a time of great struggle throughout the galaxy as heroes and villains battle for its control. Luke Skywalker, Leia Organa, Lando Calrissian and the Rebel Alliance work to thwart the Galactic Empire's stronghold on countless worlds while the evil lord Darth Vader hunts for those who stand against the Empire. Vader's efforts are aided by Sabe, a former handmaiden of his lost love Padme Amidala, and Billet Valance, who has been conscripted by Vader to fight on the side of the Empire. While Sabe's true allegiances remain a mystery, Valance finds himself on a collision course against his former partner, Toonga, and her crew of bounty hunters. But the most dangerous conflagration is the one planned by Lady Kira, leader of the Crimson Dawn crime syndicate, who is plotting an ambitious offensive aimed at destroying the Sith and wrenching power from the hands of the Empire. Unbeknownst to Kira, however, her plan is destined to collide with the Spark Eternal, an archaic technology that grants the users Sith-like powers and has taken control of the archaeologist Dr. Chelly Aphra. All of these seemingly disparate threads are actually woven into a singular tapestry, one which only the mysterious Eye of the Webbish Bog can see. So the issue starts with Vader in a back to tank on Mustafar at Fortress Vader, and he is called by the Eye of the Webbish Bog, who addresses him as Skywalker. 
Now, Fortress Vader on Mustafar, you can see that in Rogue One. I think that's where we first saw it in the canon, but we actually get to see its construction in the Darth Vader 2017 comics, issues 19 to 25. I delved deep into that on episode 74 of Star Wars Comics in Canon, so go listen to that or pick up the comics yourselves. They are in Charles Saul's 25-issue Darth Vader run from 2017, and I think it's arguably some of the best Star Wars comics that we have, so I hugely recommend people go check those out, because that story arc in itself is amazing, as are the multiple other storylines before that. But Vader gets out of the back to tank, gets on his suit, and then goes and talks to the eye of the webbish bog. And as he does that, he starts to have visions of the future or potential futures of where things can happen. So the first one he has, and it starts to get a little bit hazy as to what's what. So as we go along, I'm not going to keep telling you there are visions. I'm just going to kind of let it go with the story. uh, And then everything should make a degree of sense towards the end. But I think a lot of it is up for sort of interpretation. And obviously with the visual medium of a comic there's gonna be a lot of little details that i'm not going to mention here that yourselves may want to find out so as i say always pick up the comics where you can but we'll delve into it either way so vader's first vision is sabe being a servant of the empire to palpatine she's in like a black suit she wears some sort of helmet and the rest of the handmaidens are near her as well the eye of the webbish bog who i'm probably going to refer to as the eye going forward notes that the future is fluid unlike the past and then we get to see a clone wars flashback of anakin fighting some droids with yoda at some battle and then droids are specifically highlighted as the part of that story that's kind of interesting then it cuts back to present day and the eye says that a scourge is coming for the metal and then the muddle Whenever the Eye of the Webbish Bog says these weird riddle things to Vader, which I'm not reading them all out because there are quite a few, Vader's response to them is almost always the same, which is stop telling me riddles and just talk to me straight. So uh, just imagine Vader saying that and almost every time the Eye says anything. So the Eye then mentions about pain, and then he tries to show how it all started, it being in air quotes. So it goes to the Kligson's Moon, and there is a droid being built there called Ajax Sigma. Now, Kligson's Moon is actually in the Legends original Star Wars run of comics all the way back in 1977 in issue 47. It was like a moving droid mobile platform thing that kind of made droids. It seems to be only there in one other place in Legends it was really mentioned, whereas in the canon, it's only really in this issue so far, and it is an actual moon. I also forgot to mention that the Eye of the Webbish Bog has actually been in other pieces of canon content before. They were actually going to be put into the Rise of Skywalker. They built the whole like machinery to create it, and it was like an animatronic being. It was huge. And they were going to put it in, but then they didn't for one reason or another. And so the scene that they were going to have in the Rise of Skywalker is actually in the novelization by Ray Carlson, which is the extended version, in air quotes, of the movie. It was also in the Darth Vader 2020 run, which was this run that we're currently in at the moment, and it appeared in the story arc Into the Fire and around issues 6 to 11, which I tackled in episode 81 of Star Wars Comics and Canon, so if you want a little bit more about the Eye of the Webbish Bog, go there. But yeah, if you Google Eye of the Webbish Bog, Rise of Skywalker deleted scene, you'll see the, the kind of animatronic thing they had to be able to make this scene come to life, and I'm very sad we didn't get to see it. Hopefully it gets used again in some other content. But back to this droid, Ajax Sigma. So it was a droid who dared to be free. So it was someone who's rebelling against the organics that controlled them, you know, a droid uprising as it were, and managed to control or at least convince a lot of other droids to join its cause to say that we shouldn't be slaves to organics, essentially. Then there was this sort of fight, and it seems that the droid was cut down by Jedi of the High Republic era. And there is a Twi'lek there with a yellow lightsaber, who does have a striking resemblance to the famous Loden Greatstorm, who is a central character to Phase 1 of the High Republic, and you can actually see him on the cover of Light of the Jedi. He is Bel Zetifar's master. Now, even though this droid was destroyed, its neural core was seemingly preserved. It didn't get completely destroyed, and then someone found it, and then it got passed down through the generations, through the centuries to different people, and eventually Han and Chewie got their hands on it. Then, for a reason currently unbeknownst to us, they decide to bury it. Shortly after burying it on some random world, a droid then finds it and digs it up. Then, on the world of Mechis 3, some droids craft a new body for their leader to reactivate, being Ajax Sigma. Now, Mechis 3 is not actually in the canon elsewhere, but it is in Legends, and it was actually there for an IG-88 story in the Tales of the Bounty Hunters. It was first shown in the book Dark Saber, and then it's shown up quite a few times in the Young Jedi Knights series, the Old Republic MMORPG game. IG-88, who is a famous bounty hunter seen in Empire Strikes Back, there was actually a uprising of IG-88 models at Mechis 3, which was the uprising as mentioned in Legends, so I wonder if they're going to somewhat connect with that. 
Then it cuts to show that the Spark Eternal has got a scheme, and this is the being or the ascendant technology, this AI thing that is connected with Dr. Afra and taken her over. All of the details of that are in the Afra runs of comics, which I did tackle, I think, two or three episodes ago. So make sure you check that out because all the stuff going on with Afra at the moment is insane. It's really, really interesting. But yeah, the Spark Eternal has some sort of scheme playing, but so does Dr. Afra to try and cause a Spark Eternal pain. But then Vader says that's enough. Vader notes that the only scheming is the Eye of the Webbish Bog. He throws his lightsaber to the Eye, and the Eye stops it mid-throw, right when it's in front of him, and then pushes it back to Vader. And the Eye notes that, I am weakened, but I'm not weak. And then Vader catches his lightsaber back, and then the Eye tells Skywalker to remember his place. Vader notes that he killed Skywalker, and then he'll kill the Eye too if he doesn't get to the point. The Eye notes that Vader is blinded by rage and impatience and he notes that the Spark Eternal's destiny is intertwined with the Fermata Cage. Now, the Fermata Cage was in Crimson Rain number 5, episode 110 of Star Wars Comics and Canon. Go listen to that if you want more information on that. Then after that conversation, Vader heads back to the fortress and talks to Palpatine, who notes that there is a disturbance in the Force. He demands that Vader goes and finds the Fermata Cage, and then takes it from Kira, who is the person who seems to have activated or found it. And Palpatine notes that the Fermata Cage is a trap created by the Sith Lord who created Vader's castle. Now, obviously, I said, go back, listen to episode 74 of Comics and Canon to hear all about Fortress Vader. But the individual who sort of collaborated with Vader on his castle is an ancient Sith Lord called Momin. Now, Momin's mask is seen elsewhere. It's in the Lando miniseries, which I tackled in episode 18 of Comics and Canon. It's also mentioned very briefly in Shadow of the Sith, which is a book by Adam Christopher. And so Momin is basically a Sith Lord who possessed this mask thing. It's, it's basically that but I, I go into a lot more detail in that Darth Vader run so go check that out but basically the Fermata Cage can trap people and places outside of time and then they can recall them back in as if no time has passed for those individuals in those places and Palps notes that there is no greater threat to them them being I assume the two of them as the Sith then it's confirmed that Valance has gone missing and Lieutenant Hayden who is in the Bounty Hunters comics shot Valance in the face and then Valance fell off a cliff so she says to Vader well he must be dead and Vader says don't be so sure his skull is made from tempered durasteel so it would be foolish to think he gets killed that easily so he tells her to instruct the best trackers in the Empire and so she appoints Inferno Squad. Now, Inferno Squad are actually in some other content that other people may not be as familiar with. Now, it's Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's the more recent one, not the original one from PlayStation 2 and technically Star Wars Legends, as in the modern one that came out a few years ago that's on PS4 and those sort of relevant consoles. And it's in the campaign mode of Battlefront 2 where you primarily play as Iden Versio. She's the leader of Inferno Squad. I believe there's also a book about Inferno Squad, which I personally have not read. But Inferno Squad, there's three individuals of Inferno Squad that show in this comic panel you've got Iden Versio who I mentioned prior main character in the Star Wars Battlefront 2 campaign then you've got Del Miko and he's the individual who during Battlefront 2 actually meets Luke Skywalker which is quite an interesting little dynamic it's a fun level to play and then there's Gideon Hark who is not the greatest of people he's a uh, he's kind of the unlikable one of the group uh, but those are the three individuals you see from Inferno Squad so it's really interesting seeing that they're going to be coming into the fray of these comics as well. The eye then notes that the metal, then the muddle. Once again, he keeps saying like the metal, then the muddle. Basically saying this evil thing that's going after people is going to be going after seemingly droids and stuff and then will come after like everyone else. And the eye notes that it corrupts all that it touches and it will spread to the Edgehawk and will infect Baylor Valance. And it shows Valance then hits Zuckus and then shoots at him while Fallon is trying to hold him back and things. Bosk, the Trandoshan, then attacks Valance. Valance throws him off and it may have killed him or KO'd him too. And then Toonga is there and she notes that Valance is influenced by something. His eyes are glowing red and his hand blaster weapon charges and then we see no more. Then we see Luke on the Millennium Falcon with Leia, Lando, Chewie, R2 and 3PO. He feels a disturbance in the force and likens it to when Ben felt Alderaan blow up. He says that the source of it seems to be nearby. So they land the ship on whatever's nearby and it seems to be some sort of moon that's not on any star charts. They note that it may have been deleted by the Empire or something and then Luke says no this place is far far older than the Empire as he finds some ancient lightsabers on the floor as well as some droid scrap. There seemed to have been a big battle that was fought there hundreds of years ago if not more between droids and people. Leia questions why this has come to Luke's mind now and he notes that this disturbance isn't what brought him here. There's actually something else nearby. So they go to a homesteader ship and they find the crew that's been recently killed. So they split into pairs, Luke goes with R2 and they try and search the ship to see who is responsible for this. And Luke finds a droid, which seems to be Ajax Sigma. Now this droid claims to have been attacked by these individuals and he came onto the ship in self-defense. 
in pursuit of his attackers. Luke doesn't really believe the droid and ignites his lightsaber saying that the droid will answer for what he did. Now I want to say that here and the last couple of parts that I've been talking about, the artwork is amazing. There's a lot of double page spreads and it's really, really clever framing, really amazing artwork. Like the art in this issue is some of the best artwork I think I've seen in many, many Star Wars comics. So I really recommend people check those out. But there's some good action scenes and Luke does manage to damage this droid who says they always wanted to kill a Jedi, but then flees. Then there is another double page spread that is absolutely massive and I'm not going to be able to do it justice here because everywhere you look there's like a different thing. I think it's meant to indicate potentials of the future so I'm just going to list like a few of them that I thought kind of stood out a little bit. So you see the bounty hunters crew are all kind of fighting each other in Valance. Palpatine's there with his Sith lightsaber ignited. You've got Solo outside of Carbonite and kind of looking around. You've got Triple Zero holding Darth Vader's helmet. Then you've got Sabe holding Darth Vader's helmet and putting it on. Then you've got Kira standing over Palpatine's corpse holding her like electro dagger weapon things you then see dr afra who is kissing domina Tague, and you've got luke who's holding two lightsaber crystals one is green and one is red one of them is in each hand and he's looking confused the eye of the webbish bog then notes that this is only the beginning and vader says of what and the eye says the end and the eye notes that he's trying to show darth vader all of these things as warnings because it's showing that the end of the force the end of everything and vader's like well why should i care and the Eye has said, well, even Darth Vader is part of this galaxy. But the Eye continues and says that his mind is clouded by something, by seemingly some mist that's nearby. Vader looks around and sees there's some sort of canisters that seem to be causing this disruption to the Eye. So he looks around and then he notes that it seems like it's a trap. And then native Mustafarians jump out and then start to attack Vader. He kills all of them with ease. He does get a nick on his helmet, like one little cut there. But aside from that, he is completely fine. He does use the force to dump one of them into lava, which is quite intense. And then he goes back to the eye and he's very suspicious of the eye's intentions. And the eye notes that they just want the galaxy not to end and Darth Vader should want the same thing. And then Darth Vader leaves the eye of the Webbish Bog. And then the final panels of this show that Vader goes and talks to Palpatine. And Palpatine says that there's a disturbance in the Force and he demands that Vader finds the Fermata Cage and takes it from Kira. And Vader responds with, it will be done, my master. And then that is where this ends and it notes that it's going to be continued in Hidden Empire. Now the last little part was actually just a repetition of something that happened earlier on when Vader spoke to Palpatine. So this entire issue, everything we've seen seemingly has been a vision apart from the parts where Vader is talking to the Eye of the Webbish Bog and then that conversation he had with Palpatine. So they're the only things we know for certain, but it's a hint of what's going to happen forward. Obviously that bit where I read out, which was just lots of little nuggets of information, almost each one could be like magnified and spoken about in depth, but that's kind of a general idea of what is to come or what could be to come in the Star Wars comic realm over the next, I assume, year or so. Um, so obviously each year is like 12 issues, so that's normally like two, maybe three story arcs. So uh, it's going to be very interesting because Hidden Empire, I think, issue three is coming out like this month. So I think Hidden Empire is going to be finishing around April, May time. So uh, I don't know if that's when all these comics are going to end. I don't know if that's going to be when the next thing kind of kicks into gear, which is this Ajax Sigma stuff. I'm not overly sure, but I'm quite intrigued by it. I know when I spoke about doing this episode prior, I wasn't overly thrilled about uh, trying to do revelations because I couldn't remember how it was significant. And on the reread, it is a lot easier to comprehend and it's a lot more interesting to understand. But it is one of those things. It's like is this essential? Is this meant to be something that someone who's kind of out of the loop of comics is meant to pick up and then it will kind of give you an explanation as to what's going on? Because it doesn't really tell you what has happened. It just kind of tells you what could be happening. I want to know what the details of this are. I, I wonder if there's sort of drips and drabs of information in here, which is going to be really, really important to the future and is going to hugely impact stuff. Uh, I don't really know. I think that's what they're kind of alluding to, but it is quite difficult to figure out, obviously, what is going to be interesting, what isn't, like how do all these things intertwine it's it's going to be cool but is there going to be like this big bad is it going to be before return of the jedi so basically you're going to say these comics are going to continue and then this ancient droid thing is going to come out and then it's going to be lots of battling and things because you know it's only a year between empire strikes back and return of the jedi and with war of the bounty hunters and crimson rain there's already been quite a bit of time i mean even if we only said each issue was like a week they are getting on now quite a lot they're in the 20s or 30s so we're over the halfway mark even if you said each issue is a week now if you say each issue is like a day or one to three days i suppose it's only like a third of the year or so i know that in star wars they try not to explicitly say where things are in the timeline too much to the t because then it kind of hinders future projects if you want to put anything else in this timeline and blah 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 and it makes everything very very messy but 
it is intriguing because as much as I'm enjoying all these comic crossovers and things and what's going on, I'd be really intrigued to see what happens when, especially the main Star Wars run, catches up with Return of the Jedi. Obviously, there won't be any more Vader comics, or we we would assume, um, apart from like a few mini series. I'm sure will rear their head. Obviously, we've got Darth Vader, Black, White, and Red coming out as well. But like the main Star Wars run, a lot of people are hoping that's going to be set after Episode Six, but it's like, but there's already a lot of post episode six content so would they actually do that would they skip ahead and do post episode nine i highly doubt it i don't think they're going to touch that area apart from in really tiny ways until the movies have inevitably come out when episode 10 gets announced whether it's 5 10 15 years in the future it's going to happen at some point and they're going to tackle lots of stuff there or maybe even the rogue squadron movie or what really is going to happen after episode nine but I want to know what's going to happen with these comics, but it seems like from what Revelations is saying that we've probably got another year or so until it diverges out. Like, I assume the Bounty Hunters comics could probably continue post-episode 6. I think that would be quite an interesting thing, seeing what Bounty Hunters are up to. Maybe they have some run-ins with Din Djarin, the Mandalorian. I don't know, because, you know, the Mandalorian is set several years after Return of the Jedi, so... There is kind of a bit of movement you can have in there. I mean, there is a Star Wars Battlefront 2, which there is a little bit of stuff in that campaign, which is post-Episode 6. You've also got the Shattered Empire miniseries, which I tackled really early on. I think it was Episode 4 or something of Comics and Canon. Uh, and that's obviously just four issues, but that's like directly after Return of the Jedi. But then you've got the next year and a half to a degree not quite mapped out but with luke and some of the other characters you've got a degree of what they're up to because you've got the star wars aftermath trilogy of books so those tell kind of what happened to the empire and how it became the imperial remnant that then kind of became the first order so uh, i'm interested I'm intrigued to see where it goes i hope we get more afra i just want to see afra in every era i want afra to be alive and kicking in like episode nine i just want her to be able to do anything like super old but we shall see But that is it, my friends, for that sort of the breakdown of what Styles Revelations really is. So what is there coming up and what other stuff am I up to? Well, next week I'm going to be on holiday. uh, So when I come back, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. I may do a one-off issue, which is The Hidden Empire. I may end up doing the force collector book review because i've already actually recorded that and got it like ready to go but i was going to potentially save it for patreon or for a rainy day in air quotes but i'm not overly sure so i'll figure out it might be the force collector it might be another thing or it might be something from patreon i haven't really decided as of yet then the week after that we'll be back to normal then that'll probably be hidden empire and then i have a good idea as to kind of whether or not the other issues are going to tie in with that you know if i'm going to do it in the same structure i did crimson rain and war the bounty hunters which you know episode one will be the first issue of hidden empire and then the related issues of Darth Vader, Star Wars, Bounty Hunters, and Dr. Aphra all connecting, or if I'm going to do Hidden Empire as its own thing, because it doesn't seem to be as connected to the other content quite as much as needing to have to do like one episode where I do one issue of each, I might end up doing like an arc again, like I was kind of doing prior, as I have done the last couple episodes. So we will see about that. I'm also reading the High Republic Convergence at the moment. So once I've got through that, which will probably not be for another month or so, then I'll be able to do a book review on that. Once I've done that, I'll then be able to do the first volume of the High Republic comic in the Marvel run uh, because I think the fifth issue of that is coming out in a couple weeks and that will be the first full story arc but I don't want to do that until after I've read Convergence to know if there's any spoilers in the comics or what um, then there's lots of other bits and pieces of the hyperspace stories by Dark Horse so when the fourth one of that gets delivered to me I can then do those then obviously there's the IDW publishing Battle Tales which I keep saying uh, and then there's there's other bits and pieces going around the Hansel and Chewbacca series is going to be finishing soon there's the Yoda mini series which is currently ongoing there's the other like, High Republic stuff like the Blade mini series. there's the Quest of the Jedi one shot of the High Republic that's coming out as well so there's lots of High Republic stuff lots more crossover Hidden Empire sort of stuff and then I will not be forgetting about the mini series as well and I'm keeping my eye out for any one shots so that's what's going to be coming up in the future in addition to that I have been on Stevie B's podcast which is on YouTube a link to that is in the description we just spoke about star wars for around two hours which is really really fun always like talking star wars so if you want a more chilled conversation and more general about just stuff i like characters i like all the positive stuff that i view with star wars make sure you go check that out and support stevie's channel in addition to that myself math and dave horrocks have all recorded our rebels reviewed episode one which is where we go through each season of rebels and then we talk about it so this is like an introduction thing for rebels math has never seen it before and we talk about our low points and high points of the season one as a whole and just additional trivia information and just cool things about it that we found and then in a couple months time we'll tackle series two and then a couple months after that series three etc etc so that's going to be over the space of this year in addition when mandalorian series three comes out i'm aiming to do the weekly discussion shows as i have done with book of boba fett with kenobi and with mando series two 
so there's going to be a wide variety of guests there as well i'm hoping to get some from the podmo sphere i'm hoping to get some from the youtube sphere i'm hoping to get some from all across and it's not just going to be me hosting because the episodes come out on like my birthday and on megan's birthday at different points so i will have to duck out on a couple of them but i will be there for the majority of those but they will be uploaded to the youtube channel youtube.com slash genuine chit chat and they will also be on the feed of comics in motion so please make sure you subscribe to genuine chit chat over there you've got all of my episodes of comics in canon in playlists so you can just listen to every single episode of darth vader if you wanted to and know everything about him in the canon or you can focus on other parts like afro or age of bios which is kind of like the episodes i do which i focus on one character and give like bio information on them and things like that and the age of comics which are all like one shot comics about specific characters so they all tie in quite nicely and obviously on the youtube channel genuine chit chat i've got all my conversations for my other podcast genuine chit chat so i've got my interviews with people to do with star wars you know kevin scott claudia gray alex and molly of star wars explained dominic pace paolo villanelli loads of individuals connected with star wars in a variety of different ways so if you want to hear loads of star wars conversations you can find the playlist on youtube for that it is called star wars conversations or loads of other conversations that have not nothing to do with star wars recently there's been my conversation with radhika rao who is a buddhist so that was really cool also i did my go through the weezer discography with tony farina so we just listened to every weezer album and ranked them and then gave our favorite songs and information about the band as well so loads of great non star Warsy stuff that i get up to as well as lots of cool star Warsy stuff that i do get up to as well so that's generally what i have been up to make sure you check out the show notes there's loads of information in there make sure you sign up to the pop culture collective that is a weekly newsletter fronted by super dummy paul i contribute to it weekly as does tony farina as to the femon collective as the spider dan and a few other people it's a really great way to keep up to date with what i'm doing as well as what's going on with the comics in motion family and the extended family and other individuals who wish to contribute it's really really cool it's great if you don't want to have to keep paying attention to social media all the time so please consider checking that out a link is in the description and then the final things find me on social media at genuine chit chat on instagram twitter and on facebook please rate and review on spotify apple podcasts and good pods it helps the show out a huge huge amount please share on social media tell your friends about this show you know especially if they've never picked up a star wars comic in their life or anything like that these shows are perfect for those individuals it really helps widen people's perspective of the canon and of their comic knowledge as well and the final thing is patreon.com slash genuine chits chat for as little as one pound a month you get access to hours and hours of additional content there are exclusive star wars legends book reviews over there where i've tackled the darth bane trilogy darth plagueis shatterpoint rogue squadron uh, i've recorded one for revan as well i've finished listening to darth maul shadow hunter as well and i've got more to come there is also the odd canon book review that's on there that doesn't get put onto this main feed for many many months if not years sometimes normally when i'm like busy and i don't have time to record a full episode i just pop one of the patreon reviews on there but the legends ones are not going to be on this feed so if you want to hear my opinions on star wars legends books as well as giving an overview of their plot please consider supporting me on patreon it's only one pound a month and it would mean the absolute world to me thank you all who already contribute and thank you to anyone who would consider that but that's enough for me my friends thank you so much for listening as always i'll talk to you next week with an episode that i have not yet figured out we'll see about that but thank you for supporting the show and as always may the force be with you The intro for Star Wars Comics and Canon is arranged by myself, Mike Burton, and the backing music was made by Eric Matias of soundimage.org. You have just experienced host, creator, everything else of genuine chit-chat, and also the host and creator of Star Wars Comics and Canon, found on the Comics in Motion podcast, Mike Burton.